So you're looking for your first FPV drone. You want something for indoors and outdoors. You want something small, lightweight, and durable. You want something that's affordable. You probably want this. This might not be the average beginner drone, but after some sim time, this could be the perfect first drone. Here's why. What's up, you guys? I got this bundle of joy in the mail a couple of months ago, and I paid for it myself, so no one has control over what I do or say in this video. And I have to say, it's a huge upgrade from the old 65mm Whoop I got years ago. This thing is much more nimble and lightweight. It almost feels like a mini indoor 5-inch freestyle ripper. It's also really affordable and the reason for that is because it uses an analog VTX. That means the image quality, range and penetration aren't the best, but it helps keep costs down and it also means that this drone is compatible with a wide range of FPV goggles. You can use box-style goggles such as this guy's own Cobra or maybe get a good deal on some HDO2 fat sharks. Analog goggles are even still being made today, such as the iFlight Skyvis, so you have plenty of options when it comes to finding goggles that match your preferences and budget. You can expect flight times of up to 6 minutes and the setup process is really straightforward. I will walk you through everything in this video. But first, let's talk about why I think this drone is perfect if you're just starting out with FPV. Other than being really affordable, this thing is also super durable, which is really important since especially at the beginning you want to spend more time in the air and less time fixing your gear. I've flown this drone a lot over the past 4 months and honestly it's holding up way better than I expected. After the original frame ripped, I just wrapped it with tape and kept flying for quite a while before switching to this even lighter Beta FPV frame. That one eventually cracked too, but a bit of glue and more tape and it's still flying like nothing happened, that's why I can't be bothered to change it again. Surprisingly, the canopy which I thought will crack instantly is still going strong. And if it does break, you get a spare right in the box, which is a nice touch. With all the hard crashes I've had, sometimes motor wires come loose, but fixing them is just a matter of quickly resoldering them to the pad. Just a heads up, the solder pads are pretty small. So if you're new to FPV or soldering, get some practice first. At one point, I even fully submerged this drone in a pool by accident. All that happened was some moisture trapped in the camera lens, but after swapping out the lens, it was flying perfectly again. This is exactly why I recommend this drone for beginners. It's lightweight, shrug of abuse, and the electronics and motors are rock solid, at least in my experience. If you want something beginner proof, this is a tough one to beat. I chose the 75 over the 65 because it's a little bigger and heavier, so if it's a calm day outside, this is gonna be tons of fun to rip around, and it also allows you to grow with your flying skills when you get better at flying. How is that even possible, you ask? It all comes down to limiting your throttle, which basically tames the drone's power while you get the hang of the controls. Once you're feeling confident, you can unlock the full power as your skills progress. I will show you exactly how to set this up and more, but first, let's cover the essential gear you need to get started. We already covered the range of goggles you can get for this drone. You're also gonna need a ELRS radio. ELRS refers to the protocol the radio uses to communicate with the drone in the air. There are plenty of options out there, ranging from budget-friendly models like the RadioMaster Pocket to more expensive higher-end radios like the RadioMaster TX16S Max. For batteries, I recommend the Beta FPV Lava 450mAh packs. These packs are solid and deliver plenty of power whilst keeping you in the air for as long as possible. If you decide to get any other brand, just make sure they come with the required Beta 2.0 connector. And finally, you need a charger to charge your batteries. I recommend the Gap RC Wu power charger. It's fantastic because it has six individual channels that allow you to independently control settings for each battery. 
This is a crucial feature for storage charging your batteries if you're not going to use them for a while, which helps expand your battery's overall lifespan. Alternatively, the Beta FPV chargers are also a really solid option. Now, let's see what you have to do before you can go out and have fun flying. Once you got the Whoop out of the box, there's two things we want to do. Flash the latest ELRS software and a couple of adjustments inside the Betaflight configurator. In order to bind our radio to the drone, both the radio and the drone must be running the same version of ELRS. We'll start by flashing the drone, then the radio. Go ahead and download the Express LRS configurator. You'll find the link in the video description. First, we build the software with the latest release candidate and then we'll flash it to the drone. Once the configurator is open, we make sure the latest release is selected, choose the right device category and target. I like to flash the firmware over Wi-Fi, so I choose Wi-Fi. Make sure you choose the right regulatory domain depending on which country you live in. The binding phrase is optional, but highly recommended. Once you're done, hit build and after a while it will open the firmware file for you. Also be aware that if this is your first ever build, it might take much longer. Now grab a battery or the USB adapter that comes with your drone and power it up. After 20 seconds or so, the green LED will start flashing rapidly. This means we should now be able to connect to the ELRS Wi-Fi network. If this is your first time connecting to this network, you have to enter the password ExpressLRS. Now this window should open up. If it doesn't, type this address into your browser's search bar. Go to Update and drag and drop the firmware file we just created into this window. Don't worry if the window closes mid-update, it will normally be fine. Now wait for the green LED on the drone to resume blinking normally before unplugging the power. And that's it, and now we move over to the radio. My radio looks a bit funky, this was recorded while I was in the process of customizing it, that's why the bottom controls are missing. Well, once our radio is powered up, we go into the ELRS settings and scroll down to Wi-Fi connectivity. We want to enable the Wi-Fi network, so we just click on it. And now we can head over to our computer and we should see the ELRS network popping up again, which we will connect to. Here we can see the target and the firmware version this radio is currently running. We need this exact target to build the new firmware for our radio, so we open up ELRS Configurator again. Make sure to pick the exact same release we used to flash our drone. Now select the right target for your radio and follow the exact same steps as before. Once you're done, hit build and you will get a new firmware file that I will drag onto my desktop. Now it's time to flash this firmware onto the radio, make sure Wi-Fi is enabled and connect to the network one last time. Head over to the update tab and just like before, drag and drop the file into the window. Power cycle your radio and open up the ELRS menu again. Scroll all the way down and it should show the firmware version we selected earlier. One last thing we need to do is to make sure the internal RF is set to crossfire for the model we're gonna use with this drone. In the setup tab, simply scroll all the way down to internal RF and set it to crossfire. Grab your drone and power it up and the green LED should now be solid, indicating a connection between the radio and the drone. So far so good, let's head over to the Betaflight configurator. With your drone plugged into the computer, the first thing you want to do is place it on a flat surface and hit the Calibrate Accelerometer button. Once that it's done, we head over to the Configuration tab. 
Here you can choose a name for your drone and I like to disable the permanently enable air mode option so I can activate and disable it from a switch on my radio to give me better control when flying around tight spaces. Everything else I leave as is so we hit save and reboot. Now over in the pit tuning tab we can see the factory tune the drone comes with which I quite like. In the rate profile tab I like to set my personal rates so I switch the rate type over to beta flight. You can set my exact same rates or just leave as is. Earlier we talked about how to tame your drone's power when you just start out flying FPV. We can set this up right here by setting the throttle limit to scale and lowering the percentage to around 70 to 80 percent the drone should be quite a lot easier to handle and once you feel more confident you can just turn this off again and enjoy the full power of this little beast don't forget to hit save and let's head over to the receiver tab here we have to make sure our radio inputs are sent and read correctly in order to set this up, just move your sticks around and make sure all comments match the ones you see on screen. If your inputs don't seem to match, you can switch the channel mapping and try again after you hit save. Next up is the modes tab. You can see my modes are all set up already. In here is where you assign your radio switches to a specific function like arming or beeping. To do this, make sure that in your model's mixer settings, the radio switches are assigned to a channel, just like you're seeing here. Once you're done, don't forget to hit save and let's head over to the OSD tab. I find the stock Betaflight OSD quite clustered, so I remove everything except for battery voltage, link quality and timer 2. Here I like to move everything to the outside edges to have a clear, unobstructed view while flying. Now hit save for one last time, unplug your drone, plug in a battery and have fun flying. So yeah, there isn't much I don't like about this thing. I mean, maybe the frame and canopy could be even more durable, but I think the way to durability ratio of this thing is about as good as it can get. The electronics and motors have been really solid, especially for something around a hundred bucks. After a couple hundred packs, the motor bearings do start to sound pretty rough, but with the amount of abuse they've had, I really wouldn't mind swapping them out. As I was recording some flight footage for this video, the motor pole actually broke off. This never happened to me before, but I'm not surprised since they're quite delicate and had to handle a lot of crashes. I guess it's time for some new motors now. Other than that, I had some VTX issues when flying with friends, but that could have very well been interference of some other kind. Switching to other channels mostly fixed the issue. Whether you're just starting out with FPV or you just want a fun little indoor ripper for the cold months, this is the Whoop I would pick up again in an instant. I had so much fun with this thing over the last couple of months and since you can literally fly it anywhere, I think my flying improved quite a bit. Oh, and if you want to know the secret sauce on how to become a better, quicker pilot, it's lap timers. I'm going to show you how you can easily build one yourself in the next video, so hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss that. Thanks for watching and as always, happy flying!